we kind of put it all out there. We're not hiding anything. When we are doing our show, it is transparent. And what you hear is what we are. And uh, some of our post-production meetings are doozies, let me tell you. <laughs> Did you push record? Thank you so much for tuning into our second act with Paige and Silka. Today is our expert segment day, and I am just so thrilled to welcome Treva Brandon Scharf and <laughs> today her husband and co host on Done Being Single, Robbie Scharf. Thanks, you guys, so much for joining me today. <laughs> Our pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I'm already sitting here laughing because, and you know, try, getting ready for the show. As you can see, they do. They are professional podcasters. <laughs> so we've been doing all kinds of tests, and this is going to be like the best show ever. <laughs> Audio podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're not. That's why I didn't know if the turtleneck worked on video. I think I, I think it works terrific. I think it's working. I think it works terrific. So you know, Robbie and uh, and Trevor are a, a newly, somewhat newly married couple, which is why they're on the show today. Not only do they have just a fabulous story of finding each other late in life, but then they took their relationship on the air or yeah on the on the air even though it's podcast <laughs> to uh help those of us looking for love after 50 uh you know with with their experience and and, and dating advice so for our audience give us just a little bit of background how you got where you are today and you know what you're doing with that fabulous podcast that just cracks me up every time i tune in done being single <laughs> certainly <laughs> Would you like to? No, you start. Oh, because you know it's it's all, all about, about me. Well, hold on a second. You mean it's not about you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So the podcast started because it was it was all about me. Um, Voice America had contacted me. They I have a blog, uh, the Late Blooming Bride, and for how I was discovered, I don't know, but someone from Voice America, a talk radio network contacted me asking me if I wanted to do sort of a podcast version of the blog, which is dating advice mostly for people over 50 plus. And so I said, yes, I'd love to, but can I bring the hubs? And they sparked the idea. And then um, Hubby came up with the uh, name Done Being Single, which I thought was a, just a really apt uh, description for who we are, how we met, because we were done being single when we met. And I think a lot of people uh, in our age range and not are done being single. And so it just kind of came to be 40 plus episodes later, we are, I, oh my God, this is, is our one year anniversary. <laughs> it is. Kind of sort of, it kind of is. Wow. We're coming up. Our first uh, episode was February 17th. 2018. Pretty impressive. Well, congratulations. That's, uh, yeah. you know, you know when, when you're producing this kind of stuff, it, it takes a lot of effort to do this and keep it going. It does. Yeah, but you obviously have a message that you care deeply about, as do I. And there are so many, you know, one, one of the biggest things that I found on Second Act is that there are so many people who are just discouraged where they are at this point, you know, or don't believe that they'll ever find anybody or that, you know, it's too late. And that's something that you certainly address head on, right? Um, yes, we, uh, in one form or another, are always kind of uh, driving the, home, the point home that you're never too old, it's never too late. Uh, and it's, it, go ahead. Well, no, I think uh, so many people that we know are either getting out of long-term marriages and for whatever reason, uh, they find themselves newly single and needing to navigate the electronic waters out there. And, yeah. and the the uh, neighborhood of dating is very different today than it was when we were in our 20s and 30s. And so, uh, but actually the, um, everything still remains the same in terms of chemistry and when you meet somebody and how to date and courtship and all that, that still is intact. But the way you go about meeting them has changed. Yeah. Did, did you guys meet online? How did you meet? We did meet online. Uh, we have a lot of mutual friends. We both attended the same high school, uh, but I'm much older than Trevor. 
uh, but she caught up with me last week a little bit. Uh, so um, there were some mutual friends, and uh, I saw a post of hers, we met on a, a picture of her, and I just kind of uh, commented something, and she liked it. And I thought, oh, my God, she liked my comment, whatever it was. And so uh, at that point, we communicated a little bit over another mutual friend that was having some uh, emotional issues with a, a woman he was dating. And uh, we were trying to assist this person. And through that, we we met. And we actually physically met at her 50th birthday party. Holy shit. Me. We just had our sixth anniversary of meeting. How about that? We met on on my 50th birthday yes. at my party. That's where we physically first at met. At the birthday party yes. that was meant to be the wedding I was never going to have. <laughs> Well, I remember you telling me that uh, Trevor had, you know, I had been on the show before, and I'll link to some of our past uh, segments. But uh, yeah, that that was interesting. That that, and you had told me that by then you had like given up, and that was sort of a message that I, uh, some other dating coaches that we have on just recently said is that you know once you give up or or aren't so. Um, caught up in the outcome that maybe things happen is would you agree. Yes, Robbie, I guess you agree because you told me uh, you did. <laughs> I, I'm going to let Trevor answer that because I never stopped. He kind of never stopped. I, I never, you know, it, it wasn't a thing where I said, I'm not going to do this anymore and hopefully I'll meet somebody. No, I think Trevor actually consciously. I didn't. Uh, it's not that I, I stopped or gave up. I kind of gave up on marriage. I gave up on that. But I didn't give up on love and I didn't give up on myself. Uh, I just gave up on, um, I just released the death grip that I had on, you know, getting married by fifth, just obviously wasn't going to happen. And so at that point I thought, you know, I'm, I, whatever, what, I'm, I'll be single forever and that's okay. And by the way, I want to say something about Facebook. If you are on Facebook, you are online dating. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm learning that with, you know, the show. I mean, uh, I get, you know, stuff all the time. And I was like, why are these people asking me, you know, friending me? And it's, it's, that's what I'm figuring. That's what it is. Yeah. A very sneaky way yeah. to get in there, but it is a great way because it's organic a little bit. You know, it's not so, you know, we're, I, I'm You're on not Bumble. there just to date. Right. You're yeah. there in your life, making friends, posting your stuff. And then, you know, and look what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we're not alone there. I think a lot of people are meeting that way. Yeah. Well, what what is unique, you know, about your relationship? Well, one, you know, how you met, but then two, that you're taking it, you know, you, you produce the show. What what gave you that idea? Is that something that just came, as you say, organically because of your background? I know you have a very impressive uh, entertainment background, Robbie, and of course, Trevor being the writer, and you might as well be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Or sit okay. down. <laughs> I, I think uh, I'll, I, I won't speak for you, but I think that uh, you know the the content of Trevor's blogs created a, a basic a basis for what the show could be, and then through it all, uh, while she was blogging during our courtship, we were always talking about uh, friends of ours and issues they may have been having in dating, and all of a sudden it became like a thing like we were helping them, and they were consulting with us. Uh, in a very informal manner and uh, it soon became obvious that you know hey I think we're good at this maybe we should parlay it into something on the show possibly yeah yeah so. what uh, have you been surprised at anything in the process anything you learned that you didn't uh, already know I mean it's like one thing I've learned you know to, to, to go through it like but our big motto is we live what we bring you and that's that's what second act is about but as I'm getting more and more interactive with people you know it just I do get there's just stuff that surprises me of what's going on out there that I, that I never expected does anything come to mind when I ask that question uh, I think, uh, the level of, um, pain and I, you know, this is going to be sad. This is going to sound like not, it's, it, it I don't know. I, I feel there are people in pain and suffering. I feel people are des are really wanting love. Um, and they are frustrated and I'm not going to say they're desperate. Uh, I'm just going to say there is a level of frustration. It feels like, uh, obstacles, either they're putting them up for themselves or they're meeting obstacles along the way. And it, it feels like uh, 
if you, if they could only clear their path, if they could only see a path forward, I think people, uh, that's what I, what I pick up in these, in these, um, podcasts and in these interviews and the people that come on our show that are mostly about in our age range, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they're all great people. Um, and I, I try to, I try to tell them, you know, it's, it's in you, you, even though we, we do a lot of self improvement, you know, especially me, I mean, I'm, that's what I make a living at as a trainer and now life coach. Um, so I'm all for, uh, improvement, but there, I think there is also, um, a, a moment that people need to arrive at where they feel they're good enough that they don't, and they're not, that somehow something's missing, that they're missing something. And that kind of breaks my heart a little bit. And I think that, uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned is that we kind of put it all out there. We're not hiding anything. When we are doing our show, it is transparent. And what you hear is what we are. And uh, some of our post-production meetings are doozies, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, but um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's, Meaning it's a, what you disclose, that something that you wished you hadn't or? Any what? times like that or just, you know, how can we improve? How can we be better? How can we put on a better show? How can we better interact with each other? What is it, you know, we're always trying to improve and what, what how can we communicate better? Yeah. Well, when I found Treva, you know, I, uh, like I said, I was doing some research and I found, uh, ran across some of her articles and what attracted me right away and then what attracted me to your show once I started listening is exactly what you just described. You're, you're authentic, you're real and you don't, you know, pretend like you have all the answers. You know, you we're, we're all people with issues that we deal with every day and that we work through every day. And I think that's why, you know, both of our audiences, at least I hope that's why they connect with us. You know, the other thing that I say on, on our show on Second Act is that we take everything, you know, with 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 laughter that it, you, you need to be able to laugh at yourself at this point. <laughs> and I know <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to hear that from you. Why is it important to keep things light and laughing? Oh, my God. What's the alternative? Yeah. I mean, that life is so uh, can be so sad. <laughs> And uh, it's harsh and it's cruel and uh, and that's just waking up in the morning. (laughs) I think that, you know, what we find is that humor just makes everything better. And if you can't laugh at something and look at something in a funny way and and find the humor in it, uh, I feel sorry for you. I I also think that the 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 business that we're in. people tend to take it very seriously and that it is the life or death. If you know, it's, uh, not dating online. Dating is not, it's, uh, you know, so what if you, if you have, you know, if you're not, um, if you're, it, it, it you just, you've got to keep your sense of humor or else it will take you down. And I think it's it's so easy to be serious. Uh, we are always serious in so many ways that, uh, This is a serious subject, dating, love, uh, relationships, uh, communication. These are all very serious subjects to tackle, but we try to do it with some humor where we can and insert it. And so we can have some, you know, (laughs) and, oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, So try to have some fun with it. That's no, it. I love that. And, and you know, another one of my questions was you know, to tell our viewers, you know, how is your show different? How, how, what do you think makes your show different than other people who are out there dispensing advice? Uh, okay, we don't take ourselves too seriously, obviously. Um, <laughs> we try to make people, uh, you laugh as much as you learn. Hopefully you're laughing and learning. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to just keep it light and we also, um, we walk the walk. We were single for a long time. Unlike, I don't know, I don't know who our competition is, but something tells me they were not, they did not get married for the first time in, in their Mm fifties. So we come to this with, uh, I think a degree of, uh, authority um, and qualifications. Uh, Robbie, when we first started this really was reluctant to call himself a dating expert. 
I still am. He is not comfortable I with that? I don't think that's... Uh, what, what does that mean? I'm a dating expert. Well... I'm an expert at dating. I don't uh, know. Is that something to be proud of? I don't know. I can't... <laughs> Well, because you, you, if you, if you've done something, what's the, uh, you know, the old saying, if you've done something for 10,000 hours that qualifies no, you as an expert, I, I alone just had 10,000 dates. That's your odometer <laughs> just turned, I think on that. But see, this is another thing I really like about you guys and I, I where I feel like we're, we're, you know, uh, similar souls, if you will. I don't consider myself an expert at anything either. And people ask me, why don't you give a lecture on this? Why? It's like, no, I bring the experts to the table, hopefully, you know, like you guys. That's funny. I see you as experts. <laughs> and I think and you do that as well. You 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 gather up the issues because you've lived them and you know what needs to be addressed or what we need to learn. Would you agree? There's never a shortage of things you need to do. Uh, I am going to call myself an expert. Okay. I will. Um, I will wear that moniker proudly. But just to make sure that we um, are giving people good, solid, um, prudent advice, we bring on the, uh, the experts that can kind of back us up, right? Yes. And most of the time, we're all on the same page and we're saying the same thing. Uh, they just happen to have a PhD after their name, or a you know, or a doctor, or an MFT, or an LCSW, or something. Um, I, I I feel I kind of feel like uh, because we were in the trenches, um, because you 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 know, dating coaches. If you Google dating coaches, dating experts, I mean, my God, right? Yeah. I think uh, there's a lot of charlatans out there. There's a lot of posers. There's a lot of snake oil. Um, Where is the beef? We are the beef, okay? Um, I think we are, we are authentic, and we are, uh, we've had a lot of experience. Yeah. So that's, that's to me. That's what qualifies us as, as experts. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly agree. I, you know, I, I love talking to you. Robbie is just a hoot, and I look forward to our next segment. Uh, I want to encourage everybody do tune in to Done Being Single on VoiceAmerica.com. Is it uh, when is is it the regular time that it airs? There is a our, our new time is uh, Thursdays at twelve noon Pacific time, uh, where the new episodes air. Uh, we are no longer doing the show live. Oh, that'd be tough. A recorded podcast. And we're now on the Sexy Lifestyle Network. Terrific. Which is terrific. A, a lot of fun. Yeah, well, I will I will definitely link to all that. Uh, you know, it, it, this is a great way to get relationship advice, you know, without just feeling like you're in a therapy session. <laughs> Do you guys want to add anything before I close out this segment, uh, before we bring you back talking more specifically about how to get out there and date in the cyber world? Um, oh. What do you... Uh, I, how to do it? How to well, do that's it? what we're going to talk about in our next segment. Oh, I just okay. wanted to, if there's anything else you want to, uh, you know, tell our viewers today before we close out this segment. There's more respect for women than I do. Okay. Like, very... Uh, no, I China. think we're, we're ready. We're ready. Bring it. Bring, Bring it on the sec <laughs> segment. Yes. <laughs> oh, you guys are too funny. Well, we will see you then on our next segment of Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Button's right over here. And for more information on finding love again after 50, please visit our website, secondact.tv. See you soon.